Fairy Loon friends, welcome to the final episode of Bramble on this season, prior to the two Holly Loon shows that will finish off season 1770. Before I continue, I must say huru hule huli to Team Mackenzie, the newest merminion to enter the Omniverse. Mackenzie Means has been born this morning, and we all here are most joyous, especially my producer Molly, who is expressing her unbridled enthusiasm by snoring. Well, moving on to episode 15934, Untidy Bows. This episode is sponsored by Mind Your Own Beeswax. Their new taper beeswax candles have returned privacy to dating, an out for romantic dinner for two. One need not worry about others listening in. The Mind Your Own Beeswax candle contains conversation to a three-foot radius around the candle, preventing those nearby from hearing what is being said. A brilliant invention, if one asks me. Imagine the secrets that can now be kept secret when spoken by candlelight using the Mind Your Own Beeswax candle. I intend to purchase the jumbo pack of 12 immediately. For anyone who has anything to say that should not be heard by others, this might be the very product for you. Let's move on to our last regular episode of the season. We teased last week that someone would be treated for PTSD. Viola is the one who does the treating. And who does she treat? Dodd Hoskins, who experienced trauma after going to a good many committee meetings at Seely Hall. He could take it no more. And shaking, rattled, marbles on the verge of being lost, he was taken to Viola the first time he's ever been treated by a fae. And of course, will it work, treating a human? Will there be side effects? We shall find out. Emboldened and embittered with the power generated by their union, the engaged couple, Raffia and Lena, conspire to rid the ring of not only the Brambles, but new honorary fae, Dodd Hoskins. In their conversation, Lena clarifies, by ridding the ring of them, you do mean kill them, correct? Raffia does not answer in words, but the sinister smirk on his face suggests death is his plan. As we know, Magnolia had been invited to dinner at Nanny and Milliam's. Magnolia was so flustered she insisted on just staying for breakfast as opposed to coming back for dinner. Interestingly enough, she does have dinner with them. That is because she does not leave after breakfast. She stays and helps around the homestead. And not only does she stay for dinner, she stays on and moves in with them at the urging of both Nanny and Milliam, both of whom are rather long on the tooth and have their own issues as pertain to the stages of life. They think it would be lovely to have a younger person around to look after them if their senses or strength flag. And for Magnolia's part, she enjoys being in a loving, nurturing environment. This is new for her. Could Nanny be the influence Magnolia has needed to truly find peace and become a good fay, a, a full seely fay? It looks like it might be that way. After Dodd left the committee meeting at Seely Hall, traumatized, taken out on a gurney to Healer's Cottage, Brooke took over the running of the meeting for him. Whenever things looked like they were to veer off course in the meeting, Brooke reeled everyone back in, claiming that his unicornian filing system was superior to all of the systems and that per that system, blah, 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 meaning whatever he said next, he claimed was backed up by the unicornian filing system. Well, given the unbridled regard the Fey and all other beings have for unicorns, no one disputed anything Brooke had to say when he would bring up that filing system. How a filing system has anything to do with policy is beyond me. However, they bought it. As we know, our next episode will be the annual Yulshad episode. And so it is no surprise that members of the ring, in this case, Stock and Slate, 
have been tasked with putting up the decorations and preparing for the ring-wide festivities. They always choose the most strapping, the strongest fae to collect the boughs from the bottoms of the trees, to do the hauling, to climb the trees, to hang the lights. And in their conversation, during this chinwag between Slate and Stock, Slate finally understands the depth of feeling Stock has for Slate's sister Viola. And while Slate finds it beautiful, Slate is melancholy at the idea that he's never felt that way about anyone, and perhaps he does not have the capacity for such a depth of feeling. He says to Stock, doesn't it hurt to care that much when things go wrong? You and Viola have had a falling out in the past. What if she were to die? And Stock says the pain, while unbearable, could never compare to the bliss of loving Viola. A very, very touching scene that went straight to the heart, to be sure. While Brooke is busy in committee meetings, Maya Hollow, desperate to sew up the situation with Bernie Schwartzel of the Transit Authority, confides to Citroen, his promotional director, how frantic he is to get this situation resolved. He sent Slate to handle it. Slate returned saying he never saw Bernie Schwartzel. Thank the Aetherians that Bernie Schwartzel did not see him. As we know, Slate had gone to the Schwartzel home And whereas he did not see Bernie, he saw Bertie, Bernie's wife, and he saw all of her. Bea Hollow intends to send Dodd Hoskins to the Schwartzel home, thinking that Dodd as a human would stand a better chance of reasoning and persuading Bernie Schwartzel to move the ferry mound. Citroen, being the go-getter gal that she is, wastes no time in grabbing Mayor Hollow's hands and says, we are marching right over to the Schwartzels' home this very instant. They do so and find the Schwartzels beginning their own preparations for what they observe as Christmas, a similar to Yule Shard, but a humanized version of the Hollyloom. When they get there, Bertie, the wife, is not at home and Bernie is fit to be tied, having difficulty untangling Christmas lights. He's in a state of frustration. Citroen offers to help. She says one of her superpowers is untangling, be it spider webs, fairy locks, meaning knots placed in humans' hair, or ivy tendrils. And so they go in to chat with Bernie Schwartzel. Citroen makes short work of the detangling, and Bernie finds himself smitten with Citroen, not realizing she is a fae. One wonders what sort of arrangement Bernie and Bertie have in their marriage to have such roving eyes as they do, and in wife Bertie's case, roving hands. We'd mentioned last Pulum, last episode, that a man showed up at Ivy Glen on the books as having had an appointment with Calla Lily at the exact same time Carter was there for his regularly scheduled appointment. He's still seeing her in her position as empath. They enjoy the time together, and it is a tradition they both look forward to it. He enjoys contributing to her income, and it's a quiet time together that they know they will not be interrupted. Well, this random client from Ivy Glen shows up at the Bramble home to see Calla Lily, uninvited, and she had never given him her address. Carter is not there. The only person at home at the time is Calla Lily. But here she is, opening the door, alone, vulnerable, to a strange man who showed up at Ivy Glen, out of the blue, acting as if they knew each other. And now here he is on the Bramble home doorstep with Calla Lily alone. <sighs> Yet another Hanger off the cliff, we are left with as this season comes to an end with its regular episodes. This episode received a three mushroom rating. It did not go over as well with fans as I believe the producers would have cared, considering it is the last regular pre Hollyloom episode. Uh, let's see what the callers have to say. Caller number one, what say you? Some random customer just so happens to come into the spa requesting Callie at the same time Carter is there. Coincidence, my eye. Someone put that man up to it, but who? 
clearly someone who doesn't want Callie and Carter to marry. I hope you have some insights on the matter. I can always count on Bramble on to make sense of the show, no matter how convoluted it gets. Thank you, Carla. That's very kind of you to say you count on us to make sense of the show. It, it does get convoluted, as you said. I often wish Citroen were here to untangle the storylines for us, that being a gift she possesses. It is hard for me to believe that Raffi is not behind this certainly with this random man who shows up muddying the waters of the blooming relationship between Kellalili and Carter. But at the same time, not necessarily for any given reason, I wonder if Lena is behind this. What she personally and specifically would have to gain from breaking up this union is something I can't put my finger on, but my money is on Lena for being behind it. Perhaps it is another, another member of the unseemly, unseely court. Someone with an agenda of their own. Someone we've not yet met. The only unseely we have a connection with in this show is Prince Raffia, and that is because he is the only representative of the unseely allowed in the Seely court. Otherwise, the two courts do not mix. Unfortunately, we will have to wait until next season to find out who is behind this and what they really want. Moving on to Caller 2. Finally, a scene between Stock and Slate. Have we ever even seen them alone together on screen? Not that I can remember. I think the timing is perfect. Slate has sown his wild oats and is more open to wisdom from a male mentor. And Stock and Viola at last kissed. I wouldn't be surprised if these two became brothers-in-law down the line. At least I hope they do. Can't believe this is the last regular episode of the season. I still have so many questions. Well said, Carla. It is about time that we saw Slate and Stock in a scene together. And I believe we've all hoped for quite some time that, as you say, they would become brothers-in-law. However, now, I think there could be an actual re relationship with between them. I think you've alluded to that as well. In the past, Slate would have just been the bumptious brother-in-law in title more than anything. But now that Slate is growing up and Stock knows where he stands with Viola... I believe they can have a strong relationship, and I think Stock could prove to be the stabilizing male influence that Slate never had, having been raised by Nanny Nettlebottom when his parents died so mysteriously when Slate was young. As for your many questions, Caller, I believe that is intentional on the part of the writers and the producers to get us coming back for more next season. Leaving us hanging off the proverbial cliff is a punishment in which I think the writers revel. And I do hope we are able to answer all of your questions next season. Our last caller of the entire season, as we do not take calls or accept sponsors during Hollyloom episodes, caller number three, what do you have to say about our last regular episode? Wow, there are so many different things going on this week. My head is still spinning. I feel bad for Dodd, being traumatized by working at Seeley Hall. Human brains are really quite fragile and can only handle so much. As for the rest, no surprise about Katia and Lena. I think all saw that coming. But what a cliffhanger to leave the season on. I'll be counting on the loom until next season. You are correct about human brains being fragile. Poor Dodd. He's been through so much these last few seasons since first being introduced. One can only hope there isn't permanent damage done. However, I believe in Viola's hands, Dodd will recover. But then again, we've not seen a human undergo healing treatment from a fae. Producer Molly's snores are becoming ever louder, perhaps indicating it is time to wrap up this show of episode 15934, Untidy Bows. Our next regular season begins for Plulum, hence with season 1771. Uh, don't forget, Brambleon is always accepting artwork for the ensuing season for the cover. So please, if you are an artist of any note, then again, if you're are an artist of no note. We require no notes. Please submit your artwork for the cover of the little booklets that go out following each season. The booklet following this season will come out in three Plulum, one Plulum after the final show. Next Plulum's episode 
will be the Yulshad episode, and thereafter, the Hollyloom episode for Stessa, annual, what they call in Dim Q, self care day, an Ethereum holiday. Until the Yulshad episode, friends, please be kind to one another. Look for the good, it is always there. Please do remain calm during these Hollyloom. Bramble on, Cheriste Son. You keep sleeping, Molly. The regular season is over.